Today I'm going to be installing some spacers on the CRV. So before I even show you guys the spacers, I want to let you guys know that I had the intentions of buying this uh, spacer with my own money. And the spacers only costed $100 on Amazon, which I thought was a pretty good deal for four spacers. So I went ahead and bought it and then when I got it in the package, there was a instruction sheet. It basically said that if you made an installation video with their spacer and shouted them out that they would gift um, the spacer to you or basically refund your money. So I don't know how long they'll have that offer for, but if you guys like making uh, YouTube videos for cars or are interested, that could be like a great place to start and you can uh, potentially get some free spacers off that. My opinions won't be swayed by the fact that these spaces are free. Um, if I have a terrible experience, then I will obviously say so. So I didn't really intend to buy spacers um, because I thought that like every dollar I spent on spacers, I could just put into wheels, but I feel like I'm not going to get wheels in a while. Um, I bought them off a company called KSP Motors. So just to quickly show you guys, here is the spacers. So it just came in this unbranded Amazon box and uh, each of these smaller boxes have two spacers in them. This is what it should look like when it is brand new in the box. So this is my first time getting a spacer. I did a little bit of research on like what kind of materials um, I should expect it to be built from. So this one is advertised as uh, built with T6061 aluminum. I think a lot of people refer to it as like aircraft grade aluminum. And also these studs, they are like 10.9 grade studs. These specs or like this kind of material on a spacer is pretty standard um, from what I see online. Let's zoom in. Oh yeah, you can kind of see. It seems pretty high quality. And of course I made sure the spacer I got was the correct um, center bore for the CRV, which in this case is 64.1 and that's pretty standard for um, a lot of Hondas like Honda Civics. Make sure you guys get the correct center bore if you want to get one of these spacers. Because basically the correct center bore, which I'll show you guys later, means like it's going to be sitting in um, on the hub correctly. So yesterday night I prepared the car, I tested fitted uh, the front and the back to make sure that it fits. Um, I also adjusted my rear camber, um, which I'll show you guys right now. Um, the current fitment on the CRV lowered stock, um, the rear has a camber arm with a 20 millimeter spacer. Uh, I don't really know how to roll with, like this type of fender and like here might be hard to see but the plastic will make contact with the tire if it, don't, if it didn't pull it all the way in so for now the camera is pretty much more or less maxed out I do have to adjust it a bit later from the side you can really tell that's like super tucked in and uh, there's just like a huge gap going on here and um, same thing for the fronts you can tell that obviously like it's not even close to being flush after lowering it so here if I do the side view Obviously, you guys can see how bad it is. I know I'm talking a lot, but one more thing before I actually throw them on. Um, I know a lot of people are kind of like find spacers dangerous or suspicious. I don't really know if they're dangerous or not. Uh, I don't think they are from like the videos I'm watching as long as they're installed properly. I'll be making sure that I'm torquing everything down correctly. I'm not using the power tools, but using an actual torque wrench. So I don't want to make this video too, too long, um, but I'll quickly show you guys how to install the spacer. So I actually found the instruction sheet and here on the bottom you can see video invitation, blah, 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 and you can get the order as a gift. So that's what I'm going to be doing. If you guys are interested, you can give it a shot. And if you're not interested, I still think that it's a really good price for a set of spacers. So I'll leave a link in the description. It's going to be an affiliate link. If you guys use it, I'll make a small commission. And uh, leave a comment down below if you guys get them and let me know how the install goes for you. All right, so I'm gonna be going through the instruction sheet with you guys. They have eight steps. So step one basically says just jack your vehicle up. Step two is and remove your wheels and inspect rotors for any damage or cracks. If damage is identified, do not continue with this installation. As you can see here, no damage with the rotors. Step three is remove any visible rust from the mating flange and basically remove anything that might might make the mounting surface not smooth. So I actually bought a metal wire brush um, in case I needed to take off rust. But looking at my rotor, it like it's really smooth. There's nothing on it. What's around here is just anti-seize. So I'm actually going to add more. And um, because there's no rust, we're good to move on to step number four. Step number four is if the proper seating can be achieved, mount the 
wheel slash adapter onto the vehicle studs until it sits flush. They also recommend that you can use like thread locker, so probably like a blue thre thread locker, but most videos I see online, they don't use thread locker because it's just like your wheel and you wouldn't put um, thread locker on your lug nuts. So one of the more important steps I would say is to make sure that the center bore uh, and the center bore here match up perfectly. So with the spacer on, you can tell if the center bore is perfect if there's no up and down movement. So if you look at the top stud right here, you can see that if I move the spacer, it doesn't go up and down and it only goes from side to side. So it only rotates. Because it moves side to side, it basically shows that the center bore here and the center bore on the spacer match up perfectly. So in this case, we're pretty much good to take these lug nuts that they provide and mount up the wheel spacer. So it's just like putting on and taking off a wheel. You want to make sure that when you tighten the lug nuts, you're doing the star pattern. So it will go like this, 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 and then this. Um, if you can put a wheel on, then it's basically like putting a wheel on. So before I tighten all the rest of the nuts down, I want to read the last two steps. So step six is check for clearance. Um, which I did yesterday, and uh, it's good clearance to the fender as well as in the wheel well. Uh, step seven, if there's no interference, the vehicle may be lowered. So make sure you lower the vehicle slowly um, when you put the wheel back on. And the last step is to retorque all the lug nuts to spec after about 100 kilometers. So the torque spec of the lug nuts will be the torque spec of your wheels. Um, in my case, it's 80 foot pounds for CRV. Um, or something along those lines, but I always like to go like 82 or 84 foot pounds just to make sure. Particularly for this case, you do not want to use an impact wrench to install the spacers. This instruction sheet says do not use an impact wrench on it, um, and I'm sure it can damage it, uh, especially because if you look at the hole here, this 19 millimeter socket for uh, this wheel spacer, it like just fits in this hole. So if you use an impact wrench, it would definitely damage it. See, it just fits like perfectly. In the instructions here, they say that uh, if your wheel doesn't have the cavities, so here you can see the cavities on my stock wheels are pretty deep, so the stud will stick in here fine, but for some wheels, you might have like a flat surface instead. So just keep that in mind when you buy these spacers. And also sometimes your lug nut might be too short, so you might have to get a aftermarket or like open-ended lug nut. So the clip before this, I said that you'll have to watch um, for the OEM studs to be sticking out of the cavities um, and to make sure that they don't make contact. So I kind of ate my words there and I made a mistake and I didn't realize that uh, my wheel, the cavities weren't clearing the OEM studs. So what ended up happening was that I kept tightening the lug nuts trying to torque them down. The thread on the OEM stud basically just ate through my wheel and uh, it made a little bit of a hole or it damaged my wheel a bit. So I'll show you guys that before I end the video but uh, right now I'm going to show you guys the fitment uh, after with the spacers on. Um, yesterday I cleaned the car. It's all nice and shiny as you can see. So here is the front fitment. Hopefully you guys can kind of compare it to the uh, the fitment before. It's way more flush than before. I do have a little bit of a uh, camber going on in the front. I'm gonna show you guys from this side as well. So here you can see fitment is much better. Not perfect especially because I have a really thick tire wall but um it is much better. Uh, when it turns the plastic here pops out a bit more more often so it hits it that happens with the CRV. I think what I'll do is maybe cut off a little bit of the plastic down here. There's a little ledge, so maybe I'll take some of that off. But for now, I just press all the clips back in and it's all good. Okay, so my issue here is the rear with the spacer on the CRV. I guess you could say fitment is better, but not really. And um, I'll show you guys from the back. You can see the camber is, uh, there's an insane amount of camber. The bottom of the wheel here, it is actually uh, barely making contact with, with the ground. If I zoom it back out and I show you guys the fitment, again the camber is a little insane on the back. I maxed out the camber arm so that the wheel could fit inside. And on the CRV, 
Um, the reason why I can't uh, bring the camera out too much is because this plastic trim here is actually um, not giving me enough clearance, especially uh, right here under the wheel. So you can see I can barely get a finger through here and it's not clearing the plastic trims properly. So I'm gonna be dealing with that in the future and uh, what I'll do is probably cut it out. If I open the door and you look right here, um, this is actually just a piece of plastic, um, so I can always take this plastic out, uh, cut it along here, and then seal it back up. So that's what I'm thinking, and um, that would just give me a little bit more clearance to uh, push the wheel back out, because again, as you can see, I can't even get a finger through here, and it's already rubbing off some plastic. So before I take the car back in to fix with the camber, uh, which I won't show on video, um, I just want to say that, so I thought the cavities in my wheel actually cleared the OEM studs, and the reason why I thought that was because I was installing it in the garage, it was a little dark. I couldn't see the tiny gap that was between the spacer and the wheel. So I just went ahead and I tried to torque down the lug nuts. But how you'll know that there's not enough clearance is that when you torque down the lug nuts, you'll get the click and then you'll realize that it can keep going. Um, and that's because, again, the stud is cutting out some of the wheel. Um, for me, I just kept doing it on all four wheels, uh, not knowing that it was actually uh, taking material off my wheel. And in the end, it worked out fine because the wheels now clear the studs, but, but I'll show you guys the damage on the wheel in a second. And honestly, the best way to prevent that is either to uh, get a bigger spacer, which is not possible in my case. So if your wheel doesn't clear and you want to clear it, you'd probably have to take like something that can machine the wheel a bit, like uh, or you can sand the wheel down a bit, and uh, it will probably clear it properly. So here I wanted to show you guys what happens if you make the stupid mistake like I did. So as you can see here, I have all the lug nuts out and you can see I kick it pretty hard and um, it's stuck. So the reason why it's stuck is because it basically machined a hole into uh, my wheel and the threads, they're holding on to the wheel. Uh, when this happened to me, I was panicking because I had work the next day. So what I figured out by watching some videos online is that if you want to get a wheel off that's stuck really bad like this, you basically want to put uh, one lug nut in. So I'll put the lug nut in the top one, uh, very loosely, just like this. And then um, I went to Canadian Tire and I picked up a 10 pound sledgehammer. I'm going to take the sledgehammer and I'm going to smash it uh, on the tire wall from the bottom and it should pop the wheel out. If you guys have a low profile tire, um, you'll probably want to put a piece of wood behind it um, so it doesn't ruin your wheel. Jack up your car and just do exactly what I'm doing here. It was easier to hit this time, but the first time around, because it was stuck in really good, it won't be that easy. I had to hit it at least five or six times super hard before it popped out like this. Earlier in the video, I thought that um, the studs, so I thought that these OEM studs that were sticking out would perfectly clear into these holes. But as you can see, they clearly didn't, and uh, to me it's not a big deal. Um, obviously I wish that I didn't damage the wheel a bit. But you guys can learn from my mistake here and make sure you don't do the same thing to your wheel. So um, I didn't intend for the video to be this long, but um, I guess it's better than just a spacer install because you guys can learn from my mistake in this video. So to end off the video, I guess um, make sure you get a good quality spacer. Uh, make sure it has like the correct center board, uh, correct specs and stuff. As you can see in my video, make sure that it clears uh, your wheel properly or you're going to end up damaging your wheel. Or if you really want and it's your OEM wheel and you don't care, you can do what I did to make it clear. If it didn't fit, I would probably end up sanding down the wheel anyway. So I guess in a sense, I'm pretty lucky that it ended up working fine. Also, don't forget to torque down the spacers after a little bit of driving, which I did. And um, the last thing I'd probably say is, if your wheel gets stuck like mine, don't panic. Just take a sledgehammer to it and uh, try to knock it out. This piece is pretty good, so I don't really expect it to bond to the hub or to the wheel. I mean, you could always add a lot of anti-seize as a backup measure. So that's going to be it for my spacer install video. Um, nothing much to it. It's just like putting another wheel on. As usual, if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and I'll try my best to answer them if I know the answer to them. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.